So today we're going to look at problem F3-1 from Hibbler's Statics textbook, 14th edition. Now this problem deals with coplanar force systems. And the chapter as a whole deals with equilibrium of a particle. For this problem, we have a 550 pound crate being supported by three cables. One cable connected to a ring and two cables connected to that ring being supported by hinges. Now the question in this problem is to find the force in each of the supporting cables. For simplicity, let's label our cables. I'm going to label my ring A and each cable will carry the name from the two ends of the cable. So this would be cable AB, this would be cable AC, and this would be cable AD. Now in order to find the forces in each cable, we first need to understand what a cable is. Now from a statics perspective and an engineering mechanics perspective, the cables typically only experience tension. We cannot really use cables to exert compression. Now what that means is that the forces on all three cables, AB, AC, and AD, will be tensile forces. So this should give us a little bit of a clue as to what the directions of the forces will be. Now because all three cables are connected to a particle A, we can treat this as our particle of choice. In order to solve a problem like this, typically the first step would be to draw a free body diagram. We have four elements that we can choose from, A, B, C, and D. But like I said, since all cables are connected to A, that means that all the forces in the system will be exerted on A. That means that we can choose to draw a free body diagram of particle A in order to find all of our forces. So let's go ahead and do that. This is our free body diagram for our particle A. We identified the X and Y axis, in this case X being horizontal and Y being vertical, and we turned each of the cables into tensile forces. Because they are tensile forces, they will be acting from A outwards, which is why all the arrows are drawn in the way they are. The tensile forces of cables will act along the direction of the cables. That means that the slopes and angles we were given for the cables will be equal to the slopes and angles corresponding to our force vectors. So now let's analyze this free body diagram and see what unknowns we have. We know that the crate had a weight of 550 pounds. Because the crate is the only thing exerting a weight on cable AD, that means that our force AD will be equal to 550 pounds. So we have one known value. We still don't know the forces on cables AB and AC. However, we know that this system is in equilibrium. If this system is in equilibrium, then the vector sum of all of our forces should be equal to zero. Of course, we're not going to try vector sums here. Instead, we're going to split everything into the x and y components in order to apply our equations of equilibrium. Remember that our equations of equilibrium state that the sum of forces in the x direction should equal zero and the sum of forces in the y direction should equal zero. We also know that the sum of forces in the z direction should equal zero, but we're not really dealing with any z axis here. So these will be the two equations that we will focus on today. Let's start with the sum of forces in the x direction. What are the x components of our three tensile forces? Starting from AB and then moving clockwise, we know that the x component of our force from A to B should be equal to the magnitude of the force times the cosine of the angle of direction. Because the x component is acting in the negative x axis direction, then our force will have a negative value.
Now let's look at the x component of our force from A to C. We know that this x component is acting in the positive x direction, so it will have a positive value. We weren't given an angle, but we were given a slope. And we know that the cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. In this case, the x component should be equal to the magnitude of the force times the cosine of the angle of that force, which is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. If we look at our force AD, we'll notice that this force is acting in the vertical direction or the y direction. Therefore, its x component is actually just zero. Applying the equations of equilibrium, the sum of forces in the x direction should be equal to zero. We have one equation with two unknowns, so we can't really solve this equation right now. What we can do is look at any other equations that we may be able to use. In this case, let's turn to the sum of forces in the y direction. In the y direction, we have the y component of force AB, which is acting in the positive y direction, which should be equal to the magnitude of the total force from A to B times the sine of the angle. We also know that the y component of force A to C should be equal to the magnitude of the force from A to C times the sine of its angle. The sine of the angle is equal to the opposite side, which is 3, over the hypotenuse, which is 5. Force AD is acting only in the y direction, which means that the magnitude of the y component should be equal to the magnitude of the total force. Because it is acting in the negative y direction, we will give the force a negative sign. We have another equation with two unknowns. And again, if we were to look at this equation individually, we would not be able to solve it. However, now we have two equations with two unknowns. This is called a system of equations. And if you have the same amount of number of equations as unknowns, you should be able to solve the equation. Because we have two equations and two unknowns, this problem is solvable. So let's go ahead and try to solve it. There are two methods of evaluating systems of equations. One is to add up the equations together in order to cancel out one of the variables. And another method is substitution. Based on my teaching this semester, it seems that students feel much more comfortable with the substitution method. So we're going to use that for this exercise. First, we have to find a relationship between our two unknowns using one of the equations. Once we find that relationship, we will need to apply it into the next equation. In this case, because my sum of forces in the x direction equation has less the least amount of terms, I want to use that equation as the basis for our relationship of terms. If we take this equation, then we can solve for the force from A to B as a function of the force from A to C. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have a relationship between the force AB and the force AC. So we have a relationship between the force AB and the force AC. Notice that all the terms in this equation except for for AC are constant, which means that we only really have one variable and one unknown. We can apply this relationship into our force of Y equation. Notice that we have this expression equivalent to force AB. So we can take this entire expression and apply it into the y equation for force AB. And now what we have is an equation with only one unknown, which is force AC. We can now solve for this unknown equation. The first thing I want to do is to simplify my terms as much as I can. We have sine of 30 degrees divided by cosine of 30 degrees. We know that sine over cosine is the tangent of an angle. We also know that we have two common variables in two terms, which means that we can factor out our force AC.
And now we just need to solve for our force AC. Our force AC should be equal to 550 pounds divided by this term. Now at this point in the equation, students usually just prefer to plug in all these numbers into their calculator and then solve it. This gives us a force AC of approximately 518 pounds. Now notice that because we know the value of our force AC, we can apply it back into our relationship in order to find force AB. So let's do that. We know that force AC is 518 pounds. If we replace that term into our expression above, we will get the magnitude of force AB. Plugging in all these numbers will give us a magnitude of force AB of approximately 478 pounds. So we found the tensile forces on all three of the cables. We know that force AB is 550 pounds because that is the magnitude, that is the weight of the crate. And now we know that the tensile force in cable AB is 478 pounds and the tensile force in cable AC is 518 pounds.